Good morning and welcome to the Cook County Board of Commissioners regular meeting for July 12, 2016. We will start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Accept the general's amendment. Second. Commissioner Story seconds. Any further discussion? Any opposition? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Public comment. Public comment is an opportunity for the public to speak to the board. Any public comment? No public comment. Um, but I would like to take an opportunity on public comment. Uh, just ask for a moment from my board. Um, our world is a bit heavy right now. So we will take a moment. I thought about reading the names of the officers in Dallas and the two gentlemen recently, but as we all know, there are many people who have lost their lives that didn't make national news, and so everybody <coughs> has someone that they can take a moment. So at this time, if we could just take a moment to recognize what's going on in our world. Just a few seconds. Thank you. All right. Tough stuff. And remember to thank our law enforcement, because they put themselves in some situations these days and we always think we're safe here and I hope we remain safe here. <laughs> consent agenda. Anybody want to pull any items from the consent agenda? No? Can Commissioner Hamill? Motion approved consent agenda is presented. Second? Second. Commissioner Stevenson? Any further discussion? Any opposition? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Sheriff Eliason is not here. Molly is. Go ahead. There. Um. <laughs> um. So I will. I'm going to pass out um, the access agreement that uh, we had discussed previously in an attorney-client privilege session, which was closed. But this concerns the litigation Cook County versus K. Johnson. The access agreement, and if you'd like to just take uh, some time to review this and we can address it maybe at the end of the meeting, um, we could do it that way. But we talked about this before. This agreement act, um, sets out the conditions um, under which Kay Johnson can access the ice rink and make the changes that they um, that we said we will allow making. Um, and also behind the access agreement, you'll see some literature on the technical changes and the, um, the materials that they'll be using on the ice rink. But I'm going to recommend to the board that um, you sign this agreement. The date that Kay Johnson will come and make these changes is going to be August 8th. And I ran that by uh, Diane Booth, who will be on vacation, and um, Administrator Cadwell will meet somebody from the county there um, just to make sure they're doing what they said they were doing and not nothing more. Okay, we will open discussion. Commissioner Storbuck? Um, <coughs> well, since I haven't read any of this, but it sounds like a good plan, Molly, and you're pleased with what they're going to come back to do and the process and the type of material that they're going to use will take care of the situation? This will be a temporary fix. Okay. And um, that's what's outlined in the agreement. Okay. Um, you know, we discussed in detail the reasons to, um, the reasons behind this request in an attorney-client privilege session, which was closed. And if we want to get back into detail, um, then I would suggest that we do close the meeting, maybe address this at the end. Uh, 
but basically this agreement is consistent with everything that the board asked for um, to be comfortable with these actions back in the last session. Thank you. Commissioner Gable. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Molly, are you requesting action on this? I am requesting um, a motion to authorize execution of this access agreement. Okay, with the uh, the date being August, is is the execute executing this agreement a requirement that it be done today? Um, our attorney recommends that we get it done today to finalize the um, you okay. know, conditions under which they're. All right. They'll then performing the work. Thank you. Based upon you know our discussions that we've had in open and closed sessions on this on page three, uh, 13 and 14, I think are significant uh, points. Cook County expressly preserves all claims and remedies that are the subject of the action against Kay Johnson and the testing, which is the subject of this agreement without prejudice to Cook County's claims and remedies. And 14 Kay Johns basically acknowledges that. So what we agreed to is that if this is something that they're suggesting they want to offer that while we do not see it as being conclusive to remedy the problem, we're willing to allow them to do this with the understanding that we don't abdicate our ability to be able to hold them accountable in the future. That's right. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Severson. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. And so, um, and I'm remembering what we discussed. So, basically, this is, agreeing, this is the agreement to allow them to come in and do these test panels. Yes. So and to not um, risk our claim, but just to come in and do these test panels for discovery. That's right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, it, thank you, Madam Chair. And one other point is that all parties that we've been talking about in this litigation are still remain all parties. This doesn't relinquish any of those. Yeah. That's, that's right. All, all the uh, defendants that this defendant, Kay Johnson, has joined into the lawsuit remain. Um, we have active claims. We have active claims. So. Okay. Yeah. Madam Chair, I'd make a motion to accept the access agreement <coughs> as presented. Second. Second. Okay, Commissioner Gamble, Commissioner Storley. Any further discussion? Any opposition? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Molly, are you okay if we go to Pat? Yes. <coughs> Mr. Eliason? So I need from Nancy. She said she's going to try to make it, so. Okay. So I am here, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> to uh, get the uh, the hiring of Lindsay Milkey approved as the new lead dispatch and public safety system specialist at C41-2 Step 3. Uh, approve the change in status for Heather Wicklander. She's a dispatcher jailer from the part-time 28 hours a week to the full-time 40 hours a week. And approve the posting to fill the 28 hour a week dispatcher's position. Okay, we'll start with discussion. Commissioner Sievertson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so, Pat, just to, for clarification, these changes are due to um, one of our staff um, leaving. Correct. So it's like we're just shifting right. gears on, yes. on, on the basically internal staff. The, um, and, and clearly, um, if you were to hire folks from the outside for these positions, they probably wouldn't be as experienced or as qualified as the folks that we have internally. So this is, seems like a good decision. Right. Thank you. Commissioner Gamble. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Pat, when we talked about this, um, this is sort of a, a generic statement, but any any department when there's a change in staffing, it's an opportunity to step back and see if you can reconfigure and be a little more efficient in how you distribute roles and responsibilities, and that's reflected in in this. And my question would be that um, given our budgeting for staff, um, how this aligns with the additional hours or whatever. You know this what I'm saying? Because we've increased those hours to a 40. Is there, how's this going to this, this, this is uh, This will not have an impact on the budget. The budget will remain the same. 
Um, Lindsay's was was the full time dispatcher, so she's moving into the vacant spot. Heather is going to move into Lindsay's spot, and Heather's spot will remain open, and that's what we want to hire for. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. <coughs> well, it's good that you have great people that you can move around and up and, and hopefully up and not down. So it sounds like a plan that you've worked out. Thank you. Can I get a motion, please? <coughs> um, Madam Chair, I would uh, move the um, approval of a hiring of Lindsay Milkey as a new lead dispatch public safety system specialist, C41-2, step three. Approve the change in status for Heather Wicklander. Um, dispatcher jailer from 28 hours to 40 hours and approve the posting to fill the now vacant 28 hour position. Dispatcher jailer left by Heather Big Can I get a second? Second. Any further discussion? <coughs> Any opposition? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Thanks, Pat. Pat, I know you've already acknowledged your staff, but please, all of them dispatch all the way to the top. Thank them for what they're dealing with right now. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. I had the opportunity to talk to those that were serving, you know, during the art festival, and you, you can't help but be mindful of people that are wearing a badge right right now. I mean, it. I've asked officers when I've had the occasion to talk to them on the side of the road, and uh, <laughs> and uh, especially young officers with families. I mean, anybody, but. But uh, uh, if, if we do not empathize with the responsibility entrusted to you and, and how that affects your psyche and, and your family, we, we certainly do. So we respect what you do and appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Have a good afternoon. Stay safe. Molly, back to you. <coughs> Thank you. Um, You know, I, I'm wondering if we could, this agenda item was originally on the agenda for 855 and Nancy Larson from the U.S. Forest Service is, was going to try to make it, so I'm not We can sure. move. We can do other things. Would it that be okay? Yep. Um, we can move to commissioner concerns, meeting report, and meeting notes. Do any commissioners have concerns or meetings to note? Um, Madam Chair, we do have the um, signage uh, public meeting tomorrow at yep. 5 o'clock. Yep. So the public meeting. Okay. Um, <coughs> and there's also an active living policy group that's meeting in Grand Portage tomorrow. I don't know if any of you have RSVP'd for that, but obviously we put that on the agenda just to cover mm -hmm. if there was anything, any commissioners attending. Does anyone else have meetings to note or update? Mr. Gamble? Madam Chair, yeah, and then there was a public comment period, uh, forestry at the deck, that's Wednesday evening as well. Okay. There's another public comment period that is going to be held in Ely on the 20th. And that's the planning? And, and this has to do with uh, the permitting. Mm -hmm. <coughs> okay. Is there any commissioners that will be able to attend either one of those? I was hoping to attend tomorrow evenings. I've got family coming up, so I did talk to the commissioner from St. Louis County and will attend the one on the 20th in Ely. Okay. Please keep us posted on what mm -hmm. happens at those meetings. It's possible I could attend tomorrow meeting. It's in Duluth tomorrow. Yep. Yeah, today. I'm going to be in Duluth tomorrow. So. Okay. And then we have Commissioner Mo on the radio tomorrow, and he is not here. Is there anyone that can take that interview? Who's willing to step in and take it? I mean, I can do it. If Otherwise, I was going to say I'm in town. That's it's fine. If you want to. It's whatever. I'll take it. Okay. Okay, so I will take WTIP. Um, Commissioner Sievertson? Um, and so I uh, made the assumption that the meeting tomorrow in Duluth was about permitting mining. It's a different meeting, right? It's public comment. It's a public comment period for the yeah. mining permit. <coughs> yeah. Great, thanks. Okay. I assume that one wasn't clear. <laughs> okay. Do you think that would pass the page? Yeah, I'm going to transition. Oh. Um, um, under correspondence, Commissioner Mo wanted to make sure that we acknowledge, acknowledge Robin Derscheid for the Arrowhead Transit Employee of the Month. So any of you who have a packet, if you could please take a look at that. It was very important to Commissioner mm -hmm. Mo that we 
made sure to acknowledge that during our meeting. So if you see her around, mm -hmm. please congratulate Molly. Does that picture mean you're ready? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm still trying to connect my computer. Okay. Jeff, is there anything we can cover while Molly's getting technology working? <clears throat> um, thank you, Madam Chair. We certainly, we certainly can. Um, what's that? The assessor. <laughs> Position number C. Letter C. I don't, I don't anticipate either of them, any of them taking All right. very much time. You just want to take them in the correct order? Sure. Um, the, uh, the search committee for the Health and Human Services Director um, made a recommendation last week. We had a conversation uh, and we made an offer to candidate Josh Beck, contingent on the board's approval. Um, and he accepted that offer. So we are at the point of needing the board's approval for him to begin uh, work as the Human Services Director, I would anticipate, <coughs> on August 1st. Um, we had the position is at uh, currently rated as a D632, and the offer was to start him at step two and give him half of the step three increase at six months, and the other half at the end of the year. Uh, we developed a six-month list of goals for him to meet, um, basically as a as a plan, and uh, made an allocation um, for moving expenses, which is consistent with with past recent past practice. Okay, <coughs> Commissioner Sterling. Um, well, that sounds great that you have narrowed the field down to one. I do have a question about his association to Minnesota. Does that part of his past coming from out of state? Oh, coming from out of state. I, personally, what uh, what I know is he's not from Arizona. He's from Indiana. Oh. Okay. Uh, and his wife's family has ties with the Gunflint region. Hmm. So they mm -hmm. uh, they. They were willing to come up here for the second interview and do it personally because they had family business that they are family mm -hmm. visiting that they could do. So mm -hmm. um, uh, I have every reason to believe that they fully know what Cook County okay. is all about. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Very good. If that was the question. Yes. <laughs> Commissioner Gimble. Thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> when we began this process, we were sort of hoping that maybe we would be able to um, uh, focus on Cook County and what attracts people here in finding a candidate that you know brings the experience and the qualities that we're looking for. Um, my question would be um, uh, how we are coming in financially over and under from the standpoint of just generically speaking uh, where we were in the position. Well, to answer the question specifically, um, the director was at the D632 level, um, and our previous director had been here long enough to be at step 15 in that pay yeah, scale. Yeah. And so um, Josh is coming in with a lot of uh, demonstrated leadership capability, but not a lot of experience in, in social services. Um, okay. Arizona breaks it up differently. He's got a lot of public health experience, and he's got experience uh, with emergency management. That's how Arizona pairs those things up. And social services is done differently. Um, so our conversation, we thought we could bring him in at step two. Okay. So financially, there's a difference between those two layers. All right. And the reason I ask the question, uh, without being part of the interview process and those discussions, is that in some positions, bringing people in because of what they're bringing to the position, it it, it has an effect on where we how, where we start them, but that answers the question. Thank you. Commissioner Sievertson. Thank you, Madam Chair. So I just wanted to speak to the process a little bit because I know that there were some concerns that, um, that we as a board were not um, making this decision or, or making this decision. I just want to say that um, I thought the process was really well done. Um, and having um, people from inside the department on the committee, including Molly, 
and myself from this board, and then um, Rita Plourd from um, the Health um, Advisory Committee, um, really created a really excellent community perspective because this is a really community position aside from being a Cook County position. And so it was a really great blend of, of people and perspectives and um, Kenny did really great work. And um, this person um, was um, accepted by all. So there were no dissenting on votes. It was um, a unanimous acceptance of this person. So I'm excited that the process worked and we have a great candidate. Thank you, Jan. Look at. Can I get a motion, Mr. Gamble? <coughs> yeah, motion to approve recommendation and appreciate the work of the committee. Can I get a second? Second. Mr. Storley. Any further discussion? <coughs> Any opposition? No, go ahead. You want I to completely forgot what? Oh, well, <laughs> did you want more specific relative to the no, steps? No, no, okay, I was. We have a motion and a second. No further discussion. Any opposition? All in favor? Aye. Do you remember what it was, Jeff? <coughs> no. <laughs> It'll come back later. Can we move on to Molly? Yeah, we can go right on to Molly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, for action for the commissioners on this agenda item, I am requesting authorization to execute an amendment to the land exchange agreement. This amendment um, applies only to Schedule B, which is an attachment to the exchange agreement that commissioners executed in the fall, early winter of 2015. Um, so that exchange agreement um, obligated the county to follow through with the land exchange. Um, that was a significant step towards closing with the land exchange with the United States Forest Service. And Nancy Larson is here from the Forest Service to help me explain or answer any questions, hopefully. Um, so that's the action item. Along with that, I just wanted to provide an update to the commissioners on what are the final steps towards closing the land exchange. Um, so upon the resignation of Betty Schultz, we lost our expert in the land exchange and all things related to that. So. Administrator Cadwell contacted myself and Todd Smith and asked us to kind of get an update and uh, make sure that this continued to move forward. Um, that was timely because uh, at the same time, I, I contacted Liz Schleif of the U.S. Forest Service, who's a, um, a lands, I'm not sure what her title is with the Forest Service, but she's been working with the county along the whole way. And, um, at that moment, she was drafting a letter to the county saying, here's our timeline, here are the final steps. So, um, so first I will explain the purpose of this amendment that I'm asking the commissioners to authorize execution. Um, I provided a red line version to Commissioner Gamble because I know he had inquired of Mr. Smith um, what were the changes being made. If anyone else is interested in a red line copy, I can, pro I can provide it to you. But I've summarized in my request um, before the board what these changes, um, what the purpose is. Um, mostly uh, what these changes are doing are acknowledging what the encumbrances are. We have special use permits. Um, there were a couple special use permits that had not been acknowledged in the prior um, Schedule B. What Schedule B does is describe all of the federal lands by parcel, which are will be traded to the county. And a couple uh, special use permits had been left out of the initial description and were discovered afterwards. That would be for parcel eight, there's a special use permit for the Gichigami State Trail to the state, and there's a grant and aid snowmobile trail. Um, there were a couple corrections made to the descriptions of special use permits. And finally, the, what, the, um, what the office, what the U United States Forest Service um, Office of their Attorneys suggested um, is to affirmatively state that the proponent, that's Cook County, will be entering into agreements to honor the special use permits and 
um, easements that existed on the fed that do exist on the federal lands. So that when they change over to Cook County hands, um, the holders of those special use permits are not going to be they're not going to lose out on their privileges as to that land. And that's something that um, the county has agreed to all along. It's actually stated in the exchange agreement main document, um, but that office uh, preferred that it be affirmatively stated. So um, whereas the Schedule B used to say, if the proponent wants this use to continue, they will execute an agreement. Now it says proponent will execute an agreement for continued use um, at the time of closing. So I'll ask that commissioners authorize execution of that um, amendment. <coughs> That's one of the steps remaining. Um, the agreements that are re referred to in this Schedule B, that's another step remaining. That's something that I will be working on in the coming months. Um, there are a couple more uh, requests regarding titles that, or title issues that um, the attorney um, hired by the county to deal with title issues regarding the land exchange um, will be working on. I pass those on. And let me see, any other steps? That's basically it. Um, and then once those steps are complete, um, the title package, the final title package, will go to the attorneys um, for the US Forest Service. Basically, their staff um, did all of this preliminary work and said, we need the amendment. Um, and once that's finalized, then the, the title package goes to the attorneys. That The attorneys need to review that. Um, we expect that to take um, from three to six months. Um, and once it's reviewed and approved by the Forest Service attorneys, we'll get instructions for closing and set a time for closing on the land exchange. Um, what's, what I've displayed here, this is the um, kind of the final vicinity map for the Cook County land exchange. Um, it's difficult to see on that screen, but all of the circled areas are the lands in question that are going to be exchanged. Um, the ones towards the bottom of the map that are in Cook County right now, these are the federal lands to be exchanged to Cook County. And up here in the Boundary Waters Canoe area, these are county lands um, which will be exchanged to the Forest Service. So. Um, I'm sure most of you know this already, but the general idea is to, of the land exchange is to consolidate all of the county land together and consolidate all of the federal land together so you don't have pieces of county land existing um, up in the wilderness area and pieces of federal land surrounded by county land. So what else? Am I missing anything, Nancy? No, not at all. Uh, I think that covered it quite thoroughly, um, Molly. Um, we are really, I'll just say, on the last legs of a very long process. Um, we've hit some significant milestones in the three and a half years I've been here. And we really think closing is in our future, immediate within this year, I would, mm -hmm. I would say. And it is in the attorney's hands. And uh, I think it's just a matter of them doing the work they need to do and to bring it back to us and then we'll have a closing and then I'd like to see if we couldn't have some kind of uh, celebration on yeah. that. Yeah. Your land or our land? <laughs> <laughs> All of the land. All start of singing a song. song. Our land. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we will start with discussion. Commissioner Siebertson. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> well, congratulations, all of you who have been involved in this um, process. Um, <clears throat> it requires a lot of patience and a lot of skill to come up with this much detail. And so, just for my clarification, it's just, it's our intentions have not changed with this agreement. It's just clarifying our intentions and making things easier in the future. So, um, I don't have any questions. I just, um, I'm excited for that party at the end. <laughs> Thank you. Commissioner <laughs> Gamble. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, and thank you, Nancy. The, uh, in the state of Minnesota, if there's an encumbrance that uh, goes with the land in transaction of, of deed, then it needs to be noted. And I can understand in these land transactions because there's been multiple ones that have occurred through different counties in the state um, that uh, we, we know in principle what we intend to do, but we don't know the particulars until we look at it. We have an assessment that we need to understand encumbrances. And 
so um, intent to just generically ad ad agree to uh, allowing those encumbrances that transfer with title to be noted when we have an opportunity to look at it makes sense. My question is, is that in, in the um, uh, transactions that I have in the most recent being Lake County, is the language in the amendment similar uh, in their document as to um, some of these uh, statements that are being made? In other words, in particular, when, when we look at the document and we have an understanding that we want to go through and we want to make sure that any commitments that we have made on property, that we will honor those commitments and transfer a deed. If we examine that, the language that, that is identified in, in this amendment here, is this similar in language uh, to what we see in previous land transfers? And, and specifically, you know, when we're talking about uh, you know, the accepting and reserving the United States reserves all minerals and mineral rights not outstanding of record in third parties. That there, there is language that addresses mineral rights and service rights and so to that particular issue, does that type of language exist in previous land transactions? So while I wasn't um, involved with the Lake County Land Exchange, um, there are certain aspects of any land exchange uh, with, the, with the federal government that are considered um, the norm and policy. So as far as the mineral rights go, absolutely it's the same. Um, when it comes to the encumbrances, while I'm not familiar with the specific tracks in the Lake County, um, if there were any encumbrances, that was part of the, the deal. Um, you know, now having said that, the exchange with uh, Lake County and Cook County are completely different uh, in that the land tracks on Lake County were blocks of land that they intended to use for forestry purposes, mostly. In our case here in Cook County, we, or, or you, chose tracts of land scattered throughout the county that met a need for the county. And as we conversed on that uh, throughout the process, uh, recognizing that there were various uh, special use permits on those tracks. Um, in fact, when we did the environmental assessment um, over a year ago, which is required when we do anything of a federal action, um, this was part of the conversation with the public that we would honor agreements. And so now this is some of the, the very legalese detail that you're seeing in, 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 the, in these documents. Did that help, Gary? Uh, yeah, thank you, Nancy. Madam Chair and Nancy, the, uh, um, I, I came into this process sort of midstream and sat in on, on the discussions. Um, what I appreciate about it, you know, given the provisions of the Weeks Act and um, also in the Wilderness um, Act, that the exchange process is a process that allows us to evaluate because there is, there's that discipline and there's that assessment. So when we were looking at the plots, we would talk to our county engineer and, and we would look in IT and we would look at potential plots that would be advantageous to us. And part of that is within our county as large as it is and our road maintenance, it has to do with gravel. And so we could find you know, gravel that could be mined on properties and things like that. We would just not want to, after the fact in making that assessment, have something that would prohibit our ability to be able to use what we envisioned when we were negotiating for those tracts of land for gravel. Sure, so now I understand. Um, first of all, gravel is considered as a, a, surface, um, a surface resource. It's not considered subsurface. So it's a completely different um, governing laws and regulations and policies. So therefore, when you acquire that property, that's the surface and that's for you to manage as you see. Yeah, Madam Chair and Nancy, the, and, and this is to the point when we understand if the language isn't specific, and it, but if it's understood from a legally standpoint, saying that when we talk about, you know, retains mineral rights, we're not talking surface rights, we're talking <coughs> below, below the surface. But um, I think it's just important for us as commissioners understanding this has been a lengthy process. We've identified intentionally what we want to use and we just would not want to to lose that in a change sort of midstream. And that's why my point is in, in previous land transactions that have happened through multiple counties, you know, in the state of Minnesota from 2006, 2007, 
if similar language. I understand the uniqueness of some of the things that go along with the transfer of land, but specific to the mineral, so. So the one piece I, I'll add at this point would be, you know, from the very beginning, I think when we understood your land list and your in, in purposes for those lands, I mean, that's when the term highest and best use came into play, and, and we had to have the, the, the properties appraised with that in mind, and really the most complex uh, part of that uh, were that was the gravel resource at the time so we have recognized all along and have you know and again it's 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 a an understanding that gravel is a surface it's not subsurface and we've known that and that was part of the appraisal process there was an intention that you have to develop that resource that was part of the appraisal it, it is to do as you will okay madam chair Nancy this would be my last question is that if we were to look at documents and and that have to do with land transaction. We, we see legal documents that have normal and customary language you always put in there. It's just because that's what we've learned through experience, we need to have this language in there. And so whenever you deal with a particular entity, they will, they will say we need to have this language in there because that's what the Forest Service requires or that's whatever any agency or any relationship uh, might require in the nature of the document. And my point then is that if the language that's in the exerting and reserving is customary language that the Forest Service requires in any land transaction, that would be my final question. Well, I think before I answer it, what I'll say is, is there is a level of complexity to federal land exchange that go beyond my, my uh, sphere of influence and my skill and knowledge. However, I absolutely know that the Office of General Counsel, which are the attorneys that work for the U.S. Forest Service, and much of the work they do is of real estate, are very, uh, very detailed-oriented and cognizant of what goes in documents from one land exchange to another. And so knowing that, I'll, I have to say with confidence, this is not something unique to the Cook County Land Exchange, that we're not holding the county to a different standard, but this is the norm for a federal land exchange. In fact, Molly and, and Jeff and I learned of some other land exchanges that have occurred with Cook County and the U.S. Forest Service over the years, and we thought when we have our, our celebration of this particular one that we, in fact, may bring that history forward to remind everybody that this is an ongoing partnership with the county and the Forest Service. All right. Thank you for that assurance. <coughs> Mr. Storley. Thank you, Madam Chair. <coughs> and um, thank you to you, Nancy, and everybody else who's been working so hard on this for many, many years. Um, <clears throat> being Commissioner of the West End, I do um, go to township meetings and Tofty has been concerned about the acreage that they hopefully will be able to get. Could that be pointed out to me? Um, I don't know if Molly, if you know where that... I just moved the map a little okay. bit so you can see the um, furthest west furthest areas. West down to the so, bottom. Right, I think okay. r right there in that corner, Okay. Um, that is the birch Right. area and on here okay. on this oh parcel, which parcel okay. is yeah it? which parcel I believe it's F7. seven seven <clears throat> seven right here. Wrong, that's maple hill it might be ten okay, okay. is it ten ten, ten. um so parcel ten, ten. where's ten Bev you got your pointer <laughs> This is defining <laughs> I mean, this is defining agreements mm -hmm. that we have with people currently on the land. Right. So Birch Grove may not have any current agreements with the Forest Service. Right. I'm not sure it has any reservations or outstanding rights. Yeah. Okay. So that part behind Birch Grove is how how is that considered then? In what area? It's part of the original agreement. It's okay. part of the right. exchange agreement. Right. It'll be part of the exchange. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It'll be part of it. And okay. It's been on the list. And when we entered in that exchange <coughs> agreement, that was a huge milestone to say, this is the land list. This is where we're moving forward. And so now the work that Molly has before her is related to the encumbrances and some of the legalese language that our attorneys um, are asking us to pursue. You know, the one thing I'll say, you know, one of the steps that we've been through since we've talked last uh, was congressional oversight. So we've, we've passed this through Congress at this point, and, and so we really are on the last legs. And so when it comes um, to the final decision and it comes before the board, then um, they will be able to apply to have it into their township. 
How do we do it? What's that process? That one to do, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Okay. So once once the um, the land exchange, once we close on the land exchange in three to six months, the property is entirely Cook County's, and mm -hmm. we can um, you know make any transactions that we would make related to any county property. Okay. So we'll take time beyond that then. Really? It will yes. take So mm -hmm. we're looking at next year. Mm -hmm. Likely. Yeah. Okay. Thank I'm you. not sure exactly what you have in mind, but mm -hmm. that's okay. <laughs> <Commissioner>, <laughs> we want to commissioner Gamble. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and just to clarify, I mean the board has approved as has the Forestry Service approved this transaction. Yeah. It just we're going through the analysis and the refinement, so we're in agreement. We just need mm -hmm. the particulars to fall in place in order to for it to be ratified. That's right. Um, I'm just going to bring up the exchange agreement. This is the exchange agreement that the county entered into in, oh, I guess it was April of last April year. I was thinking it was 15, fall. Like My um, auntie's birthday, I signed that. I was hoping it was good luck. You gave them all that land. But anyway, in, in <laughs> one of these attachments, it's, it's going to describe. Land. Here's the original Schedule B. I'm not going to be able to find parcel 10 easily here, but I can <coughs> look at it after okay. after this meeting. <coughs> yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. And just to, as a as a comment, um, and we wrestle with this as a board that uh, within our packet, we know we have the option to table things to get additional information. But I, I think whenever there's a, a change, and we see it a lot of times with ordinances, that we'll have strike through, we'll have you know it denoted in some way. And um, I just think from a, an oversight and informing the board that if we can have, have that information in the packet, it just helps us to assess it. I appreciate the fact that Nancy's here and we, were, we had a discussion, but we don't know sometimes. It just, it's on a, on a request and we, we don't have, I appreciate you know, Todd's scrambling because he wasn't part of this, but he went to the file you know, to get the document, but it just helps us. So anytime we can get the additional information, beneficial of the state. So Madam Chair, uh, Commissioner Gamble, um, are you asking that I always put the red line version of the, the amendment? Into the uh, well, package? what I would say in this instance particular, and I was making a generic statement because we wrestle with this, do we have enough information to inform, mm -hmm. that, it, that if we have an amendment that, that replaces an existing, it would be nice to know the nature of the change Otherwise, we can't assess that unless there's a narrative at the meeting, but we don't always get the narrative. So that's, that's what I'm suggesting. If, if you say, you know, this is a lengthy document and I'm only going to pull out the section that we're talking about, that can be done. But just something, because in this case, we have an amendment to a section that we aren't, you know, privy to, and therefore it would be nice to see what it says. So just a gentle <laughs> comment to everybody. That provides information to the board. Thank you. Can I get a motion? Commissioner Sievertson? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I would make the motion to authorize the execution of an amendment to the land exchange agreement, which revises an attachment to the exchange agreement called Schedule B here. I will second that. Any further discussion? Any opposition? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Nancy, not that I want to prevent you from any type of promotion or advancement in your career, but please stay until this is completed. <laughs> well, I, promise, I, I just want to say, you know, this is just my second land exchange as a career person with the U.S. Forest Service, and I've never been at this stage where we're close to closing. I'm not going anywhere. This is, uh, this is part of the great deal about it. It's in the public interest, in the county's interest, in the, in, the, in the American public. So very exciting. Congratulations. I'm excited. Let's have a gathering at the end. It's absolutely. I'm the one that went into panic when our assessor moved on to a new job. I was like, what about the land is staying in the park? We'll <laughs> <laughs> invite her. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you for doing Thank you. Brian? Mm -hmm. I'm getting money out of this deal. It's brand new. 
Thanks. One is the roof on the old part of the courthouse here. I didn't get pictures because it's been so wet up there. But that roof is 30 years old and it's starting to fail. I had Jamar come and fix 15 leaks in the roof this last week. So at some point we're going to need to replace that probably within the next couple of years. And the second issue, well, and the quote that they gave me was around $120,000 for the roof. And the second issue, as you can see, are the windows here and also at the jail. They're the same manufacturer, the same year, they're 18 years old. And the first picture you see is it's rotted right out at the jail. We have to close them up and insulate them and whatever by hand in the winter time because the wind blows right through them. As you know this one blew off last winter out here and part of that is because the wood at the base is rotted out and the screws just can't hold it anymore. And we have I think six windows upstairs that are the same thing falling apart. If you walk around the outside of the building, you'll see the white weather stripping sticking out of the windows. We put that in every year and it comes out, water gets in there, and they're rotted right out. So, I don't know what it's going to cost, but I'm guessing with a couple of people I've talked to, it's probably $100,000 to change out all the windows here and at the jail. So 120 for the roof and 100 for the windows? We don't have Roughly. That. But right, but what roughly. we need to do is, you know, get some quotes or bids, see what it's going to cost, and then we have to figure out how we're going to pay for it. Okay. And that's Brady's job. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's we brilliant. will start with discussion. Commissioner Storley. Thank you, Madam Chair. Brady, how's your windows? <laughs> Closing. Hi. They're the old ones. They've been here forever, and they, wow. they're doing good. They keep, they keep the rain out. Mm. So these windows didn't come with any kind of guarantee, like Anderson windows or ten so years. Ten years, yeah. yeah. Eighteen years old. <laughs> we don't come mm. with guarantees. Well, it looks like you've um, gone around and observed. Are you talking the new windows here too? All of these new windows on the, the addition. Okay. They're all starting to fail. Mm. And I think the only way to do it is to get rid of them all and start all over. You can't even buy the windows to put back in it because they just won't seal right. Mm. right. Mm -hmm. So it seems that the, whoever you get the bids from need to look at the <clears throat> casings and knock out all the old wood and really start from the base. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Gamble. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Brian, is there, um, I mean, have you looked at it? Maybe you know just because you've been in the maintenance department so long here uh, and you do good work. The, um, because we're dealing with the jail on the one hand and we're dealing with a, a courthouse, are, are there any funding mechanisms or any grant dollars or anything else? Sometimes you'll see things that, you know, come up but uh, in your experience, or has anybody <coughs> advised, if you checked with other maintenance personnel in other counties, whether or not there's any funding pools that might be available, law enforcement or, you know, I mean. We could do that. I can research that a little bit. We did that when we had to do all the top pointing. We did get a grant to help us with that. Yeah. So there might be something out there. I, I think, I mean, the reality is we have to protect our investment, but we have the discussion on this on all of the county owned buildings and um, um, I can empathize with the frustration being in the maintenance department having to deal with this and then come before board of commissioners and say yes yeah, so what do you want me to do um, and then you know we sit here and say well, gee but we don't have the, have the money so any creativity or resourcefulness that might find some money to help mitigate that 
but we obviously have to consider this. Uh, what what would you say timeline for? Uh, you've got windows here, windows at law enforcement, and you've got a roof here. So what would be the timeline? You mentioned the roof in the next couple of years. We need to do something, but so we're looking at this as we're going into budget session here. So the windows at the jail are indefinitely wide open to the outside. These pieces of wood are yeah. So we should do that as soon as we get the money and as get a soon bid as we and somebody can, do, can that, do it. That needs to be done. Okay. So that would be number one priority 2016. How about where are we at with the windows here? About the same. We oh. have some upstairs that aren't closing right, aren't sealing right. Okay. In the winter, the wind blows right through them. So your recommendation would be that we really should tackle these windows if we can come up with a funding source in 2016 and the roof we could maybe look at at 2017 or 18? Correct. Yeah. Is that opinion on the roof just from your lived experience or is that somebody that well, I does had, assessment? I had Jamar come up this spring and they uh, did an inspection on all of our roofs. We, we have issues at the community center, the highway garage, yeah. and they found some places where the ice had fallen off and poked holes in the roof. That was okay. some of our issues. But when they went over that roof, all the rubber around the flashings and the yeah. vents up there was pulling up. I had them fix that, but as you look at the roof, you can tell it's just deteriorating. <coughs> For 30 years, it's actually in fairly yeah. good shape. Yeah. So windows this year and roof next year would be ideal. Right. Okay, and thank you. And we can fund it all together and get it done, and yeah. you know, that might make more sense. I, I would agree. It just if you're going to bond for it or yeah. whatever we have to do, I think it would be in our best interest to do it all at once. Yeah. Thank you. That's Commissioner, up to Bergie, though. Commissioner Sievertson. Thank you, Madam Chair, and um, thank you for all those really good questions. Um, yeah, clearly this is an issue, and I think when we think of $120,000 um, fix of a roof when we're looking at a building that's several million, um, that's not a bad um, thing. I mean, not a bad thing to do to protect our investment in this building. Um, and I liked um, Commissioner Gamble's points about windows and that it's immediate concern. It's not something that we want to put off. And I liked what you said about <coughs> um, plugging it into our capital plan. And I really appreciated that conversation we had a couple of weeks ago with um, Bruce Kimmel from um, Ehlers on, on, on creating a really strong capital investment financial plan. And this, this works for me, and I um, feel like you do, that we really need to fix it. Mm -hmm. And if we could do it all at once, we could probably save um, some money just in travel and, and brain and all of that. So it makes sense to me that we would build this into our plan. Mr. <coughs> Gamble? Motion to uh, approve or authorize uh, Brian to proceed with getting bids and looking at potential funding opportunities. Can I get a second? I would second that. Brian, can you talk to Pat? My concern is replacing windows on the jail when we're having discussions about changing the jail facility itself. That would kind of be a thing we that. Talked, we have talked about this already, Pat and I have. You know, if, if that plan would work so we could do it all at once and do the expansion, I'm okay with that. Because we would save money. Okay. Jeff? And that's part of our building committee thing that we're Jeff and I have been working on so yeah thank you madam chair some of the some of these needs are um, so getting bids so that we really know what we're looking at mm -hmm. um, also we will be seeing um, contracts to do larger assessments uh, proposed to the board to take a look at a comprehensive look like we did with the YMCA I'm gonna ask Brian to budget that we do that uh, for all of our facilities so that over the next couple of years we really get a big picture of what that looks like um, so some of these things are going to fall under short-term maintenance uh, even though they're outside of the current budget and some of these are going to fall into that longer-term capital plan where we're going to look at, at packaging some of these things so um, Brian's bringing this up and saying hey we've got some immediate concerns uh, if you remember these some of these things were listed on the list that we discussed at our meeting um, the end of June um, so 
we, we've got some short term, we've got some long term, we have different ways to figure out how to pay for them. We can certainly look and see if there are other funding sources available. Um, and, and we are thinking big picture when we're looking at these things. So we're not going to replace some windows and then come back two, three years later and take those windows out and move the wall. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank um, you. It, right, right now we are waiting for a quote from Nancy at uh, CRBPS to do an assessment for the jail to get us down the road with that project. Uh, and I wouldn't anticipate that we would do anything that would, we wouldn't put the things in the wrong order when we're doing that. Okay, Commissioner Gamble? Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. Our discussion that we had um, relative to potential for bonding, um, I think, I mean, it, it, was, it was very good that we take a look at, at how we go about financing things and not um, putting it in the levy and given our uh, where we are as far as our, our credit worthiness that that we should maximize our ability to use that uh, I think the the point is you know relative to Commissioner to Kirk's comment that are we looking at this in the context of potentially expanding the jail that uh, we just need to be sure we're stepping back far enough if if we go the way of bonding and prioritize based upon real identified need and I think certainly for people like Brian that uh, have to maintain our facilities, we, we need to listen attentively to what he's, he's saying because to create new opportunities for him to have to manage you know, without taking care of what we got would be very frustrating. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Any opposition? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Thanks for the pictures. Yeah. <laughs> I always appreciate the pictures. <laughs> Jeff, back to you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, we, um, the next item, the schoolhouse road right-of-way acquisition. Um, we have one last um, technical authority uh, that we didn't grant when we did the closing or, or when we approved the purchase on May 3rd. And uh, Attorney Hicken rightly recommend, rec recognized that um, the board had not delegated authority to the county administrator to execute the agreements and documentation related to the closing of the purchase. So this is, um, the closing was set to have happened on July 1st. The closing is set to happen later this afternoon, uh, pending that the board would, uh, would make the motion uh, to grant the authority for me to execute the documents related to the closing of this property. And the, the summary of the three documents for this process are included here. Okay, discussion, Commissioner Siebertson. Uh, thank you, <coughs> Chair. Um, I have no questions. Um, I'm very much in favor of this. Commissioner Gamble? No comments. Commissioner Storlick? No comment. Can I get a motion? <coughs> motion to delegate authority of the county administrator to execute all agreements and documentation related to the closing of the purchase of the schoolhouse road. Can I get a second? Second. Commissioner Storlick? Any further discussion? Any opposition? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you, Madam Chair. And um, item 7C uh, talks about discussing the search timeline and hiring process uh, for finding a new county assessor. Um, after our conversation related to the search for um, the Director of Health and Human Services, um, I. I the decisions that were made and the recommendations that were made were based on uh, research that I'd done with other counties and how they how they do things, uh, how they how they find staff, um, and the the search for the human services director was consistent with that. So what I want to do is get ahead of the curve here so that the board members know what we're what we're setting up, uh, what we're going to. I'll bring to the board a policy similar to the, the example I'm using as Lake County's board. Um, and so in this search, um, typically for uh, a staff level position, human, uh, human resources is involved, the director of that department or the immediate supervisor is involved, and they do the search and they conduct the interviews and, and they bring it to the board to affirm the, uh, the hiring of the position. And, and I think that's consistent with what your experience has been. Um, the fact that we're dealing with a, a department head level doesn't happen as often, except for right now. <laughs> so um, uh, Lake County's process with that is, is um, for when we get to a department head level, 
is Human Resources, which would be myself and Judy Hill, um, a, uh, another department head um, within the organization, and then uh, a member of the board. So one of the, one of the commissioners would be on that search committee. So that's what I'm proposing that we do for the assessor position, is that it would be myself and Judy. Tim Nelson has agreed to be on the search committee for the assessor Good. position, and uh, Commissioner Gamble has expressed an interest in being involved in that search as well. Um, right now we have that position open, uh, applications closing on August 15th, so um, I, I'm just asking the board to, to consider that would be our, our process, that would be our group um, that would go forward with the search, <clears throat> and that would be the group then that would bring a recommendation to this full board once we find a, a candidate that that, that group approves. Them. So on the agenda you have it as information, but do you actually want a motion to approve the committee? Um, we could we could do that. We have until August fifteenth before closing. So I, I I'm throwing that, this out for conversation. Um, we could we could form that committee today, or I could bring the recommendation policy to a future meeting, and we could still approve this in July and, and set that committee. But basically, just an opportunity for people to to uh, to understand the process that I have been following and doing this, and plan to follow going going forward with those. Um, we could we could set that committee today. Uh, as, as I said, Commissioner Gamble has expressed an interest in being involved in that search committee, and if there isn't anybody wanting else wanting to be involved in that one, then I, th I think that'd be appropriate today. Okay, Commissioner Storley. Um, I really have no questions. I would be interested, though, in the policy and how you come up with guidelines on that. Yep, and I and I intend to bring a proposed policy <coughs> in one of the next couple of meetings. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, my interest to stem from the, the fact of being liaison to the uh, assessor's office when we've been in that role. So. Commissioner Severson. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. And I'm also in favor of um, Commissioner Gamble serving, particularly being liaison, and Tim Nelson, and um, Jeff and Judy. That committee seems good to me. And I would also like to see the policy. So. Um, I don't need to act on this right now before seeing the policy, but I could. I could go. Okay, just the, what is the board's desire? Does anyone would like to make a motion? If not, we can. I'll, I'll it include. I'll include it on a, on a future another, on a future meeting. Uh, I'll bring a draft of the policy as one action item, and the approval of this search committee as a second action item. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And the final item that I have, Madam Chair, is. Um, is consistent with our uh, personnel policy uh, that allows a department head, in this case me acting as the department head for the assessor's office, to recommend a temporary out-of-class appointment um, for our staff who are having to do some additional duties while we're without an assessor. And um, I'm asking the board to consider approving uh, the temporary out-of-class appointment of Todd Smith from C432 step seven to D632 <coughs> step one and Lisa Kerr from B322 step three to C422 step one. Okay, Commissioner Thank you, Commissioner. Um, I'm, it makes sense to me for us to do more work and, um, and I'm, of course, making the, the assumption, I think rightly so, that they're qualified to do this extra work. And it's not outside their boundaries of, of what they'd be expected in their job description, so I'm very much in favor of Commissioner Gamble? Ready to support? Commissioner Stanley? Ready to support, so I'm going <clears> to <throat> make a motion that we approve the temporary out of class appointments in the assessor's office for Todd Smith from C43 2 step 7 to D63 2 step 1, and Lisa Kerr from B32 2 step 3 to C42 2 step 1. Support. Sure. <coughs> that, uh, my only question is: this retroactive to the day that Betty left? Thank you, Madam Chair, for that question. The um, the personnel committee's um, current practice has been that uh, these appointments and these uh, these changes are effective the day that the board makes the decision. Okay. Um, so I would I would say that that's a good uh, a good practice to follow here. So this would be effective as of today. Excellent. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Any opposition? 
All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you. All right, now to the fun part of the meeting. We have anniversaries. So we have Chris Shrupp, three years at our law enforcement. Mitch Everson is our environmental engineer in planning and zoning. We celebrate six years. Brady, Ooh. 25 Ooh. years of celebrating Ooh. all the fun we have here. Thank you. Silver and gold. That's a quarter of a century. Molly, yes. thank you for nine years. Wow. We have Neil Cooper in our road and bridge, also nine years. Jim Wienanen for nine years. Nice. And Julie Berglund, who has also been through a multitude of changes of commissioners and responsibilities, is celebrating more than two decades. I think I told her I wouldn't say how many years I'll love. <laughs> With that, can I get a motion to adjourn? So Mr. Gamble? <coughs> we are adjourned. <laughs>